Hello, windbreak growers. This is Kevin Kelly, windbreakologist with windbreaktrees.com. Today we're going to have a short video, I hope it's short, on um, laying out your windbreak, um, doing some planting, some different descriptions, and, and um, how to uh, kind of get going on your windbreak. Um, one thing I do like to stress is if you're going to put in a windbreak, try to plan for a year ahead of time. Um, it makes it a lot easier uh, to lay out your windbreak and to control any vegetation. If you have other trees in there you want to get rid of, if you're a new planting, if you need to put grass seed down, always put the grass seed down first. Um, one of the things that I do like to mention to people is that they, there is a lot of cost share programs for windbreaks. Um, the best place to check with that is if you're um, Farm Service Agency office. Um, there's federal programs under the CRP and there's many state programs also. So if you'd like to try to get some cost share, don't be afraid to contact those people and just ask them about that. One thing we like to do when we lay out our windbreaks is we like to get some kind of a string to um, get the rows nice and straight. And this is what I use myself. I got these little strings that uh, you can buy at any hardware store. They just unravel. We'll get a couple stakes. I think this one's good for um, 100 yards, I believe. And I get some stakes. Pull out your, your line and get a nice straight row. Um, then you've got to mark your trees. And to do that, you can step it off. Maybe you got a tape measure. Um, these work really nice for getting the right distance. And again, always know what kind of tree you're planting ahead of time. Um, so you can get the right spacing and never plant your trees too close together. Very common issue with windbreaks. Um, when you're marking it out, you're going to want to put something in to show where the, where the tree is going to be. A um, couple good ideas. You can get these little flags. They're kind of handy. Put them in the ground. Another thing is these little doodads here that make a little spot of paint on the ground. And that uh, would mark where your trees are going to go. Um, if you're doing a spring or fall planting and you're in somewhere like this where you have a lot of grass, we do advise that you mark it out um, at least six months ahead of time and spray a nice circle of 2% Roundup. Circle about this big where you're going to plant that tree. That makes it so much easier digging and the next spring for getting your trees in. Um, on the planting of the trees, there's different kinds of trees, whether you want to go with bare root trees or potted trees. Uh, bare root work okay. Um, I planted a lot of windbreaks using bare root trees. They take a little more care. And we can talk about the different ones. Here's a couple of Norway spruce here. We've got what we call our seedlings on the on your right there. You can see the small root system on there. That's a seedling. Um, that's a tree that's been grown from a seed. It has never been dug up and it has kind of a limited root system to it. Then we have what we call transplants. This is a tree that's been grown usually a couple years, dug up, the roots are trimmed, and then it's put back into the ground to uh, get a bigger root system. Your root system is your most important part of your tree. So I usually don't pay any attention to what's above ground. I try to look at what's below ground. That's the most important part of your tree. Let's talk about our seedling here. If we were going to plant this, I would take this and I would cut off any extra long roots here. Just kind of take the tips off. And that's about how it would look when it gets ready to be planted. And for planting this, fairly simple. I got my special bare root tree planting spade. I usually go in, make a little slot here. And I'll make one more time. And I have a slot about this wide. And I will look at where the planting depth is. And it's always going to be about one inch above your top lateral root. So it's going to be approximately one inch above there. I will take my finger and hold it right there at that point. I will go ahead and put the tree in the ground, make sure the roots are pointing down, not sticking out of the ground. And then I will go ahead and press this soil in um, and get that compacted in. Fairly easy to do, um, not hard to uh, figure out how that works. On our transplant, we have all of these nice roots here, but we want to cut it, want to going to want to cut off the long ones. So that's probably about how it is. You can see I've cut off the any roots that's longer than about oh, a foot or so, eight inches. 
we do not want to plant trees where we would take the roots and curl them around or um, possibly even have them sticking out of the ground. I've seen that many times. And one like this, I like to just build a base, just um, dig a basic hole. I'm gonna use my little rug there. That's really handy for keeping your dirt where you can find it again. So switch over to my little spade. I kind of like that. Don't have to dig quite so much. And you see, it didn't take me long to get a nice uh, hole. It's probably about 10 inches deep. I've got my tree with the roots trimmed again. I'm going to find that top lateral root. I'm going to have my soil line approximately one inch above that, and I'm going to hold that tree right there. I'm going to put it into the ground. I'm going to make sure all the roots are pointed down, and I'm going to hold that right at the soil line. One thing you want to remember is never plant your bare root trees in the middle of the hole. They will sink. Always plant them at the side of the hole. This keeps them from sliding down. I would go ahead, put the soil back in. Usually I try to keep the sod on the top and not next to the roots. You can see that well went pretty fast. Then we're just going to firm in the soil. Don't have to stomp on it or anything, um, but get that soil firmed in. Again, you're done. You're going to want to get some good weed control around that, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Okay. Then we've got our potted tree. Now, this is probably the one of my favorite ones to plant. You get a, about two or three years ahead of like a bare root transplant. Um, you can see what you got there. Uh, nice to be able to see a, bit, a little bigger tree. And where you've got your lines marked out, we would just put the tree right there in that spot. And I like to just use my spade and just go around the pot just a few inches out farther from where the pot is. I set the tree off to the side and usually a couple of good spadefuls and you're about halfway there. We've got some awful nice soil here in Iowa, so your soil may not be this nice, but um, as long as it's a native type of a topsoil, that's good. Um, if it's something else, you may have to mend it a little bit with some other kind of soil, but um, um, every situation is different, and I just can't cover them all, so I'll just put down that native topsoil is the best. And if you're planting trees, always try to plant native ones if you can. There's something that has been shown to be just what you want that grows well in your area. And if you don't know, don't be afraid to ask. You can email me. But a lot of times I tell people, drive around and look at some of the big trees that are growing in your area. That's probably the best indicator of what does well in your area. Don't go by what you necessarily see on the internet. They're only interested in selling trees and they really don't care if they live or die. Okay, normally we would pop our tree out of the pot. We've got this nice root system here. I like to lay it down and make about four cuts one inch deep. So we would go around the tree, make about four cuts, make a little X across the bottom, just one inch deep. Then we're going to get, put it in the hole and see how we're doing. Oh, we're a little too deep. So we're gonna put in some soil. And the main thing to remember is do not plant a tree with loose soil underneath the, the ball of earth. Do not do that, it will sink. And if the soil gets up on that stem, it will eventually die. We see this a lot on our trees. Most important thing, plant it to the proper depth. Okay, that looks good. Um, I found my top lateral root, it's right there. So we're going to put the soil approximately one inch above that. And that should be good right there. We'll go ahead and put the soil back in again. We'll try to leave the sod out until the end. Yeah, it's not hard to do and you don't have to do it all the same day. If you've got a bunch of trees to do, do some one day, do some the next day. And I like to use my favorite tree plant spade and go around that couple of inches that's around 
the ball. Worm that in. Don't have to pound it too high, hard. Just worm it in nice. And then I will go ahead and put the rest of the soil around the tree. This is where the rug comes in really handy. You don't have to try to find all that soil or, or try to get it somewhere where it's caught in all the grass. Then I like to go around with my heel. Just make one little other trip around there. You firm that in. And that should be it. You should, your tree's planted. Um, you can smooth this out a little bit. Um, some people like to water their trees right after they're planted. That's okay. Normally we don't do that if it's in the springtime and the tree hasn't started growing yet. We always figure it's going to rain and we can um, take advantage of that situation. Okay, the next most important thing on your trees is good weed control. If you're gonna let the sod grow around your trees, your growth rate's gonna be cut by two thirds. Why? Because sod takes all the moisture and the nutrients. So if you have sod around your tree and you get one inch of rain, your tree will get nothing. Uh, the grass will absorb that one inch and send it back into the atmosphere. So what do we do? I personally like and recommend that you use herbicides. Um, that's what we have always used. We've used mulch and other things, um, tried chilling around them and doing that. But we found out herbicides work the best. I think they're safe. Um, I've used them my entire life. And one thing I always say about herbicides, they're safe. Just don't drink them or go swimming in them. Um, read the directions, always follow the label directions, and you should be have no problem. And it's the simplest and easiest way to get your trees off to a good start. What do we recommend? Again, I recommend glyphosate or Roundup. Here's like a label off of one, and it's got the 41% glyphosate. So this is called Farmer's Roundup. You can buy a gallon for around $25. And that will do a lot of a uh, lot of trees. Um, how much do you mix? We like a two percent solution. So if you have one gallon of water, um, we like to put in about two ounces of glyphosate herbicide. I got these little measuring cups. You can buy these where you buy the buy the herbicide, and they have the graduations on there. I always write poison on it so that they're not going to use that to bake a cake with or anything. So again one gallon of spray we're going to put in two ounces of glyphosate and that's a contact glyphosate only kills what's green then we don't want it to grow back for several months so we have a product that we like to use called acumen um, the active ingredient is pendamethalum um, we like to put in two percent that also the same as the glyphosate mix it all together with the glyphosate and spray the circle around your trees we like to come out about two feet from the tree, make a nice big circle. Um, you can use this about twice a year. Um, it depends on how much it rains and so forth, but don't be afraid to use that. Get around your tree, you know, kind of stay away from your blower branches and kind of go slow around there. Um, people ask, how much do I put on? What we like to do is tell people is that spray a circle around your tree and get down and look at the grass. Is it just wet and not dripping off? that's about what you're gonna need. Um, it's easy to do, it's fast, it's efficient. Um, the Acumen only comes in two and a half gallon containers. So that's gonna cost you about $120 if you wanna use that. So most people don't need that much. Some people just use Roundup. Maybe spray twice a year around with Roundup. That will take care of most of your, your weeds. Don't spray more than twice a year. Another idea is to use this it's called Perine. Available everywhere. It has the same active ingredient as what your Acumen has, Pendamethalum. It's got a little granular. You just shake it out over the trees. And uh, that's another thing um, that uh, sure does work. We have different kinds of sprayers here that people can use. We've got our four gallon sprayer, which works really good. And they have these smaller two gallon sprayers. And I've even seen people use a smaller sprayer like this and spray around the tree. So whatever you can make work, again, put on just enough so that the grass is just wet or the weeds 
and does not drip off. Do not let your weeds get up three feet tall and try to spram them. I like to keep my vegetation about two inches tall um, when I spray. That uh, keeps it from going out too far and um, getting where it should go. One thing about our trees that uh, we sell at the nursery is our trees are not real thick and heavy. This is a Technia Revida. This is a Canadian fir. I don't like thick, heavy trees. Why? Because every needle has to be supported by a root system. So if you have a big, thick, heavy tree, you got to have a lot more roots. You probably got a bigger pot, um, takes more work. You got to water it more often. And in the end, after five years, we've always shown that a smaller tree that's thinner um, is the same size as a bigger tree that takes years to get established. So that's my thoughts on that. I don't recommend bigger bald and burlap trees or trees put in with a tree spade. They're just, um, they cut off so much of the roots. A lot of times it's over 90% of the root system is cut off. That's not good. It's gonna take a year for that tree to reestablish that. During that time period, if you have some hot, dry weather, um, you may lose your trees. And sometimes it takes two or three years down the road. So you have a big tree and then you have to put in a small tree again. Okay, on the watering. I recommend that if you do need to water, you use the 5, 10, 20, 30 rule. Five gallons of water on the 10th, 20th, and 30th of the month. Now this would be only um, if you're not getting your regular rains, if you've got your tree sprayed around, um, you're way ahead of the game. So why do I like the buckets? Because some people say, well, I'm gonna buy a hose and use a hose. Well, we found out is if you're like all of us, you get out there with a the hose, you wait about 10 seconds and up, oh, it's starting to run off and you go to the next one. But when you actually figure it out, that tree's probably only got a couple quarts of water and most of it didn't soak in, it kind of rolled off, especially if it's dry. That's why we like these buckets. We drill a one inch eighth hole, about an inch up from the bottom. And we will set this by the tree. And then if you're using a hose or maybe some kind of a water tank, fill up that bucket and then let it squirt on there. And then you're gonna know that that tree got the full, full amount of moisture that really needs to get through that year. Um, normally, if you have a fairly normal year and you have a good um, tree um, that's potted, a lot of times we never have to water our tree. So always remember that, don't overwater. water. Um, people think that when it gets hot and dry, the first thing they wanna do is water their tree every day. That's not the thing to do. Um, anytime your root system is totally saturated, it's starting to die. So you don't necessarily want that. Now in some sandy situations, um, it's possible that might not be such a bad idea. Um, when it gets really hot, um, if you really want to do something, is when the sun is the hardest thing. It can't take up enough moisture in the root system to support the needles. So what do we do? Well, one thing that we have tried that does work is between 10 and maybe four or five o'clock in the afternoon, we'll throw a white sheet over this tree. Keep the sun off of it. That's the hardest thing in your trees, just like a person. If you're out in the sun, what do they say to do? Get in the shade, same thing with a tree. Again, if you've got a big windbreak, that's probably not um, possible, but that's always a thought to do that. Um, I think we covered most everything on our, on our planting. Um, Always plan a year ahead of time. Get the right species for your area. Um, check on your cost share if you want to do that. And if you have any questions, you can always email me anytime um, from our website. Um, so I will leave it at that with the, with the um, planting. Oh, one other thing I'd like to mention is if you're going to use a spade, make sure it is sharp. Uh, make sure that you have um, sharp on this edge here to make that sure that's razor sharp. It'll save a lot of work. All right, if I missed anything, you can sure email me and we will let you know what we think and what we know from our 50 years of planting windbreaks. But uh, this is Kevin Kelly with Windbreakologist at windbreaktrees.com. Thanks for viewing my, my video.